I absolutely love it when the free market speaks and you find those companies and the people behind those companies that have a backbone. And I hope these individuals that stand up for what's right, regardless of the perceived social risk, I hope they crush it. I hope they crush the weak-minded competition that gives in at the first sign of somebody tweeting something bad on Twitter or the government telling me I got to do this or whatever. I hope companies like in and out absolutely destroy their fiat competition. I hope their stock or the company, I believe they're a private company actually. I hope they it doubles. I hope the founders get so freaking rich. We refuse to become the vaccination police for any government. A spokesperson for the fast food chain said in and out burger. Love it. I love, love to see this. Why does this matter? Let's first do a very quick, maybe potentially world piercing view or perspective on democracy. So Lenin said that democracy is indispensable to socialism because democracy slides into mob rule. When 51% of the population can vote on how everybody, how the other 49% is supposed to live, what you get is you get the non-producers of society, which tend to make up 51%. If you actually look at a recent election, they were the non-producers. Unfortunately, whether you identify this way as not, I'm sorry, not sorry, but the liberal perspective, the democratic perspective is one in which redistribution of wealth from producers to non-producers is the entire paradigm worldview. This fundamentally is why democracy is immoral, but it's also why all governments are immoral. Because what you're doing is you're stealing from one, you're calling it legal, quote unquote legal, it's organized theft, and you're taking from those that make parasitically and giving to those that don't, or distributing to those that need it or whatever. And then guess what? Who decides that? Other people. And so they bail out their buddy banks and buddy corporations. You give money to people uh, because their skin color or because they have this many kids or that many kids or whatever, or because they didn't produce in society. So you reward them and then they stay more of a non-producer and so on and so forth. And every single time, as a quote goes by, uh, Titler said this, he said that the democracy will last only until the point, uh, something like where before the public realizes that they can vote for politicians that will give them gifts from the government's coffers or something like that. I totally butchered that quote. But basically what he's saying is democracy will continue. It just won't last when we move past that point where people realize that they can vote for money for themselves. That's, that's what it is, basically. And that's what all politics is. I mean, look at it. The entire plot political system is like, okay, we're going to choose two candidates for you. We're going to pit them against each other. We're going to basically convince you that this actually matters. Your vote actually matters. We actually control both of them and we win either way. And you have no choice of whether the government is going to be big or smaller. You have just a perceived choice as to which figurehead is going to be quote unquote running the show, even though he really doesn't. It's an entire illusion. And what happens every election America, for example, gets a little bit bigger, a little bit more bureaucratic, and politicians come in and do a little bit more things and regulations and this and that, and they're always promising to fix what they did and what... No. It's just like whatever's going to get them votes at the current time based on the prevailing uh, census among the lowest common denominator, the non-producers generally, not all, but a lot of the non-producers, because you see a lot of them actually vote, and they vote emotionally, and they vote basically for things that will benefit them. This is the problem with democracy. And this is why democracy slides into socialism. And, and now in 2020, government itself, this is, this is a mind blowing number. Government has reached 50% of GDP. The government that actually doesn't produce anything and just redistributes wealth that is produced by the productive members of society is then doled out in ways to others, uh, you know, big buddy contractors and give to these people and that group and this group and whatever. And we know that for every $1 that the government pulls in, they might on a good day produce like one to two cents of value for the actual society in which they're supposedly uh, running, controlling, helping, whatever. This is why when you understand libertarianism uh, and you really look at like the axioms of natural law, and freedom of speech and property rights. When you understand that prosperity has only ever come and always only will come from the free market, you realize that government is unjust and government is nothing more than the mafia. It is here, I'm gonna give you services, I'm gonna give you protection, 
and I'm going to write laws and you're going to pay me whether you like it or not. That's what government is. It's unbelievable and insane that even I'm 36 now, my whole life, nobody's ever said anything like this to me. I had to kind of come to these realizations on my own through the craziness of life. It all makes so much damn sense now. Government is wrong, uh, at least the way it is. Aside from that, I love it when I see companies do this. They stand up for what's right. And I will say as a final note, the only reason that government, the US government specifically, has been able to last as long as it has is because we do have relatively strong property rights and we do have a Bill of Rights and a Constitution that does have some checks and balances that does, I would say, for the majority of people, protect them in certain ways. Of course, what you see, though, is the Constitution Bill of Rights is not applied across the board. It's applied selectively for certain people and not selectively for others. Government plays favorites. Government will prosecute people and ignore due process and ignore things by just slapping some label like terrorist on it, which is, we can thank the Patriot Act for that, or the FEMA Act, which is basically the government's uh, free-for-all that if there's an emergency, they can suspend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. A lot of people don't know that. I, I think Re Reagan signed it into law and he was pretty regretful about doing it. He thinks he made a big mistake with that. So perhaps this video should be much more about democracy and government, but when you see companies that do this, when they stand up for what's right, when they protect liberty and human rights, and they don't just give in to whatever the cultural narrative is around about, you know, the very vocal people on Twitter, or, or unfortunately a lot of times a liberal perspective, but not just liberal, there's a lot of dumb conservative perspectives. Uh, I mean, I'm one to abolish all parties. I think they're all wrong. They're all unjust. But if I had, like, if I had to pick one and I'm not picking one, but if I had to pick one that was the most aligned with liberty, it would be towards the right end of the spectrum. It just is what it is. It's just a reality. And that being said too, I've seen more crazy people on the left and I've seen the crazy things that they've said and recommend way more than I've seen any craziness from the right side. But of course, it's all ridiculous. The whole two-party system is a sham. It's a show. It's a circus. It's professional wrestling. It's entertainment. And it gives the masses the illusion of having some kind of say in the matter at all when they don't. And America is inching for one day at a time, one election at a time, closer to full-blown socialism, which will then eventually kill itself, especially when the dollar collapses. That's when they're going to just, it's going to be really bad, right? And that's why you need to be buying your Bitcoin. It's the only thing that you can do to protect yourself. It is the first uncensorable, unconfiscatable, hard is money there is in existence ever in the history of humanity. And in addition to that, I would say have uh, water, have food, challenge everything, be a skeptic, stop accepting the things that they tell you to accept and stop accepting uh, the status quo as if it's right or just or just the way it is. This stuff will change one human at a time, one better human at a time. If you aren't already, get on the Better Human newsletter, thebetterhuman.co. Appreciate you listening to this and or watching and I'll see you in the next one.